Welcome back, baseball fans, to the card set analysis for the 1973 card set. We opened this box up last week, took a crack at the America League East and the America League North. Tonight we're going to finish the rest of the American League, the Midwest and the West. And we're going to look at the teams, who they want to keep, um, and see if they're... And also take a look at uh, the rookies uh, that are getting into the... Who would have one more year of eligibility with uh, as a rookie. Uh, meaning that in 73, uh, the rookies... There were two rookies taken last year. Um, they still have protection on the, rook, the 73 rookie class for the first four rounds of the draft. At that time, if they still haven't been selected, then they go into a general pool of players and anybody could take them. So we're going to start with the White Sox and look at their guys from 73. White Sox had a great 72 or 70 to 73 season going to the league championship against Oakland. And the guys they are keeping, a couple guys they got in a, in a trade. They got Jack Aker in a trade, Louis Aparicio, Tom Egan, and Ken Henderson in a trade. So let's see if these guys are pretty good in, in the year of 73. Here's 73, Ken Henderson. Uh, immediately stands out as the great defense. Two minus two in center field. Switch hitter. Against righties, he does get some walks to help a lower batting average. Does have a little bit of power. Has a higher batting average against lefties. Yeah, this is an okay player, but obviously this particular template indicated that he would have been uh, the eighth best hitter on the White Sox up 260 in 73. Um, so, yeah, this would definitely be, I guess, the low bar. You, you would take this card if you can't find one better than this. That's pretty good for Ken Anderson. Then Jack Aker, we like his 71 and 72. Now it's, he's getting a little older. And he's not that great anymore. 408. So not this one. We like 71 or 72. Now you got Aparicio. He's a three, but he was also a three in 72. He's still a B stealer, A and B. And he's really still a good little player. Wow, what a long career he had. 271. You know, no extra base hits really. But just a steady guy, and he would have been on the uh, Red Sox here instead of the White Sox. But this card th could definitely get in the league. Um, if he's a two, I prefer to get him as a two defensive player, if that's even possible. And um, Tom Egan is not represented here. We can now take a peek at the rookies who weren't taken last year who are still property of the White Sox for half the first half of the draft. And right at the top is George Orta. And they need a second baseman. So he couldn't get into the league last year because they ran out of spots. Um, he was good enough to get into the league. Now's his chance. I think Orta, either 73 or 74, he's better than 74. But I predict Orta will get into the league this year. Laren Legro, he's decent in the bullpen. You know, 433. Luis Alvarado, utility player, is okay. Nothing special. A very young Bucky Dent, playing all over the infield in addition to shortstop. His bat's not bad. Doesn't really get much better than this, believe it or not. 248, that's Bucky Dent, you know. Jerry Harrison. There's some good players here. He'd love to have this on base guy, batting first or second on your team, getting on base ahead of Dick Allen and Carlos May. You got Bart Johnson here. Starter 5, he has a better season, I think, in the future. That's okay. And Steve Stone, between the Giants, the White Sox, the Cubs, and the Orioles, nothing ever really stands out. So, you know, obviously you saw many players better than Steve Stone in this particular sample. So that's the White Sox, and that's a nice little stack of cards there. They're in good shape. All right. Next up, you got your Kansas City Royals. Oops. Kansas City Royals. Dwayne Josephson, Bob Oliver, Marty Patton, Horatio Pena. Here's Marty Patton, 73. 
Um, he's still pitching on the rotation, but not nearly as good as he did between 70 and 72. So no to this guy. Bob Oliver, corner, infielder, and can play outfield this year. He's got interesting power. Batting average is like 265. <laughs> that was a lucky guess. Um, 33 walks, 100 strikeouts. Yeah, that's fine. That's the, uh, again, the low bar for him to get into the league. If you can find a better card, get it. Horatio Pena really gets the righties out, but, oh, he's vulnerable to lefties here. Got to watch that for righties. You flip it, I don't mind so much. I'll take a lefty who gets lefties out and gets lit up by righties. And that's their keepers. Look at that, 276 ERA. And I bet you Kansas City's going to have some good guys available from the 73 rookie bunch. Frank White, not ready yet. Defensively or at the plate. So you got to wait on him a little bit. Steve Busby uh, doesn't have control yet. And he's kind of hit or miss. He's got like one really good year. I think it's 75. Pitches on three days rest, but doesn't pitch very well. Gene Garber, not yet either. He's a relief starter. He's got more work to do till he's a better pitcher. Skip Jutsey, not much there. And that is your... Not much in the Royals young guys, but that's okay. They already have a bunch of young guys. So, All right next up, Milwaukee. JLU, Jim Fregosi, Ken Sanders, George Scott. All right, well, George Scott, this is this is easy because he's always good in all the years. And this is just another typical great year for George Scott. 306, 24 home runs for Milwaukee. For Milwaukee. Look, George, George just left the uh, stadium. Uh, he fell to the ground. Can't have that, George. Don't like to drop those. So yeah, that gets that card will get into the league. He might be better than this, but I doubt it. That's a really good card. A one first baseman. Oh heck yeah. So that's good news for Milwaukee. Fergosi is losing the the leverage he had at short. He was once a two shortstop, which makes his hitting even more impressive. But now. He's going over to first and third, and the bat is, his is actually a good bat here. He still has, not look at the triple there. This is still a nice bat, 273, 268. But he's got some pretty odd years where he hits like 233 in this. Scott and Fergosi, if you uh, can find somebody else to play shortstop. J.L. Lou. Now he's a pinch hitter now at this point of his career. 108 at bats, 306. All against lefties, though. Well, 306 is 306. It's hard to deny that. So he'll probably get in the league. Those are the three of the four. The Young Brewers, and they had some good ones come in last year. They had Daryl Porter and Jim Colburn come into the league. Pedro Garcia is best year, and look at the power against an extra base hits against righties as a three-second baseman. You don't even really care about left-handed, not so much, because you're doing it against righties. That's this is easily the best Pedro Garcia card. So if you either take him or you'd never take him. Tim Johnson, left-handed infielder, but no glove, and even doesn't even have on base really. No, two thirteen. Gorman Thomas, still too young to contribute at this point. Bill Champion, the dreaded starter five relief four, which makes him a relief four because I don't like starter five starting. And he walks too many guys. He's okay. Uh, 370 up the if he gets lucky, but I don't think it'll play that well. Here's Jim Slayton, though. Starter eight, Jim Slayton. There's your guy right there. You need a guy? You already have Colburn. Um, I think you got, uh, you got another guy on, uh, three days rest from the former Seattle pilot. Can't think of who it is. Yeah, but Slayton will just jump right into that rotation. That's a great card. Utility player Kurt Bavacqua does this for most of his career. Nice contributions. Bill Sharp, def good defensive corner outfielder, left-hander. Nice card, this one. Not known for power, but... You know, kind of a line drive hitter here. It's about 282 or something. 276. And it doesn't, it's still decent against lefties. Not too bad. Nice young Brewers. Nice young uh, Brewers. But they also have to re remember that they have to add Robin Yount 
in this 74 card to the uh, draft. Get him in the league. Now the Twins. We're talking Rod, Kill uh, Rod Carew, Harmon Killebrew, Phil Roof, Stan Williams. So here's Carew. We'd love to get this guy as a 330 hitter. It seems like 300 is not good enough. Well, he's a 350 hitter. Is that good enough? I hope so. <laughs> A 350 hitter with six home runs to, as well. They probably gave him. They probably gave him power. That card is getting to the league. That is. He had 366. He had 388, and he's hit 350. I don't know if that's the third highest average he ever had, but from my memory, uh, I played the 388 card. I played the 366 card, and now I'll be playing a 350 card. So, pretty cool stuff there. All right, Phil Roof, not so much here. He'll have a good 1975. Killebrew, mm, he can actually still draw walks, which is which is cool. But um, we know he has a better card in an earlier year. Let's look at the twin young guns. Eric Soderholm, what a great debut card for him. Didn't play a lot, but those walks were an outlier, and the extra base hits as well. No, de actually, he's a three defense as well. Three hundred hitter, two ninety seven. Fun card. Oh, this would really help the Twins to get this card in the league. That's excellent. Craig Robinson, uh, not so much there. Steve Bry, yeah, that's a nice uh, corner power outfielder. I think he hits twenty homers in one of these years. Here he's just a part time player in two sixty three. That's okay. Bobby Darwin, he has a 25 homer year in one of these. Maybe it's 74, not this one. Eddie Bain, a lefty who, can you get lefties out for me? Yeah, sure he can, that's okay. I'm not really concerned what happens over here, but this is decent. This is the ERA's, oh, it's probably gonna be like 450. 492, yeah. See, this is what I mean. If you're left-handed with a 492 ERA, you still can get into this league. All you gotta do is get lefties out for him. If you can do that, I wish it was better, but still. Um, there's a shortage of left-handed pitching, as you can imagine, so a guy like Eddie Bain will probably make it. Very young Bill Campbell. He'll uh, win 17 games, I think, in 76, or one of those years. Just 52 innings here. Capable setup guy. Joe Decker, nice star six. I think he uh, pitches on three days rest in a future year. Lots well, of nice twins. Those are nice guys right there. So, twins are in good shape, thanks to Rod Carew and company. All right, we'll take a quick break and we'll get to the America League West. All right, we'll continue now in the America League West, beginning with the California Angels. Uh, they want to keep Eddie Fisher, Bill Singer, Jim Spencer, Cesar Tovar. And here we have uh, Jim Spencer doing his typical oneness there. Typical decent 273 hitter with not much power. Normally an everyday player. This year is particularly not a good one. 262, just very ordinary. So baseline here. You're looking for something a little bit more from him. Tovar. He still has the infield outfield versatility, but the defense is lacking now. He's now just a three and left, a four and right, not good defensively, and he's also not an eight, a stealer anymore. He can hit though, no question about the hitting. 268 hitter and 300 at bats, but yeah, he's you really want 71 or 72. Bill Singer, just a legend in Stratomatic. Uh, help the Dodgers, help the Angels. Big game pitcher, big postseason pitcher. Always did well for me. Wins 20 games here. Um, wonderful card. Not, of course, his best card, though, but don't like the walks there. But, boy, he really is great against righties. No homers and an out there and air. Don't like those walks, but that's okay. I like the out there and there. So, yeah, this singer Carl getting into the league. That's outstanding. Eddie Fisher, 
Not this year, probably 71 and 72. 488, yeah. So let's take a look at the uh, Angel rookies. Rudy Mioli. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, versatile player, left-handed batter. And as a left-handed batter, he's not so bad against lefties. But he's also not very good against righties. As a utility player, if they need a utility spot, he'll get into the league for that. Just to be on the bench in case somebody gets hurt. But otherwise, um, no reason for him to start. Rich Hand. Um, Cleveland. He was with Cleveland for a bit. Then he went to the Angels. Not, not much here, really. Dick Lang. Too many home runs for my liking, even though he's good against lefties. But with this home run... No, I don't like this card. Nah. Well, that was a pretty bad rookie class for the Angels. Kind of explains why you know they didn't do anything till '79. All right, Oakland. The A's. This is the last year in the dynasty of '74, and they still have to decide on some classic Oakland players which year to pick. Sal Bando, Burt Campaneros, Gene Tennis, and Orlando Cepeda. This is Cepeda's last year, and he's just a DH here, as you can see. But he's still good. 73 with Boston, a full-time DH. And look at that, 20 homers, 289 hitter. Doesn't play first base anymore. This car can get into the league, but you got better options in 71 and 2. Now, this Gene Tennis card is more typical of what he would be doing Later in the decade for the Padres and then later the Cardinals and some other teams. Home runs and walks. And a ton of walks. He's now starting to accumulate a bunch of them. 101 of them. 24 home runs and 73. This is the tennis card. So 71 and 72 I wasn't really crazy about. Now I finally see a tennis card I like. He's a 4 the 0 arm. He can play first. And he can play second. Bando, wow, another good card. 69 was a great year for Bando. But this one's pretty darn close to it. It's amazing, 73. I was thinking 74. Yeah, they're in the middle of the dynasty here. Uh, great Bando and tennis cards. Wow, that's really good. So, the, yeah, these are the two guys. That's great news for the A's. Because, like I said, a lot of these guys had their best years in 69, 70, or 71. And now we have Campanaris, who's a two shortstop. We need the defense. His defense let the A's down last year. Bat's not here, though. Of course he's going to get on base, steal bases. Bat's against lefties, but it's just not there against righties. Um, 250. Yeah, that's like the baseline. You want to start at 250 and work your way up for Campanaris. Hope for something better. Let's look at the young guys. Whoops. Oh, wait a minute. Here we go. Here we go. We have Jimmy Howarth. Doesn't do much. Nope. Vic Harris, utility player as a switch hitter. Okay. Not as a utility player, if you need a bench player, you add him. That's it. Well, the minor leagues aren't very good at this point, which is why they went out to get Orlando Cepeda in the previous year. Work him in at first base in DH with uh, Mike Hegan. All right, Seattle. Always fun to look at these expansion teams because you have no idea who they have. Norm Miller, Skip Pitlock, Diego Segui, and Luke Walker. Here's Luke Walker. An okay left-handed reliever. He walks too many guys for my liking here. With a 465 ERA, I hope not. Uh, you really don't want to discard in the league. You hope, you're looking for a different Luke. And if not, find uh, Eddie Bain. Remember that guy I showed you before? Get him a set. Diego Segui has a couple nice cards here. Here he's strictly a reliever. He's also a relief starter one of the other years. Very good reliever here. And he's doing it in a Cardinal uniform in 73 in 100 innings. That's nice. Nice reliever here. Really good. Out, 1 to 3. Out, 1 to 6. 1 to 9. 1 to 8. Cool card for Diego Segui. So they have a couple options with him, which is great for an expansion team like Seattle. They need all the help they can get, right? 
And there are young players. Wow, here's a great steal, a theft. So they ended up uh, getting Bill North in an expansion draft away from Oakland in his first productive year in 1973. So how do you win in the West when Oakland's got a dynasty? you got to steal their players. So, And shed no tears for Oakland or Cincinnati or Baltimore or Pittsburgh or, or the Dodgers, you know, the Reds, Pirates, whatever. They can't keep all the guys. And when they are left unprotected, they're going to be stolen away. And so Seattle will be very smart to activate this guy this year. Make him a first or second round pick. What more do you want? He can catch and throw and steal. A little bit of power. This would really close the gap. I mean, there's a lot of work for Seattle to do to, you know, get to 500 or, and knock the A's out of the West. But stealing one of their players will certainly help. The A's were hoping this guy would be available to replace Angel Mangual in center field. And uh, Gonzalo Marquez and uh, Jose Tartable and the others. But uh, nope, they're not going to get him. Uh, that's great news for Seattle. He would be probably one of the best players on the team, oddly enough. I'm trying to think. So we, have, we know some of the guys are on this team in different years. Mario Lou, John Ellis... Ron Woods, Dick Woodson, Skip Lockwood. A very good Dave May card uh, is on this team as well. But, yeah, North will really help. Alan Foster is also a rookie in their system. Starter seven. They got plenty of starting pitching, believe it or not, Seattle. you would That's a real shocker, but that's what they did in the draft. They went all starting pitching. Figuring it's easier to find four players than find 20. So make, get four starters, you don't have to worry about it. And then the other 16 guys are going to be lousy. But at least, <laughs> uh, you know, if your starters pitch lights out, you know. Mike Phillips, just what he always is, a utility player. Nothing amazing there, but he's okay. Very young Pachork, he does some nice stuff for Seattle and the White Sox in the late 70s, early 80s. Here he's a Dodger, I believe. Yep, 73. Look at this Adrian Garrett with all his power. As a catcher, a lefty catcher with all his power. A fun card. Winston Lennis, nothing special there. Leroy Stanton, he's all over the place. Usually one good year and two bad ones. That's a bad one. Adrian Devine, not very good. Well, that's it for Seattle. They have, uh, you know... Yeah, their prospects aren't the greatest. And the last is the Rangers. Another fun team that's done gone a long way to transition from the Senators, from the Frank Howard and Mike Epstein's, to the Jeff Burroughs and so forth. So they have Bernie Allen, uh, Billy Canigliaro, Frank Howard, and Bob Johnson. Here's Bob Johnson. He's now only a reliever, and he's an okay one. But I don't, I don't want to put those homers on the... Yeah, I hate that. Right, he gives up homers over there. No thanks. Uh, so we still got Frank Howard. He still has some life in 71 and 72. But now he's just a one-way player in 73 in his final year. But this Carl... In two years from now, this Carl will get into the year with as his final card. But, uh, yeah. And we got Billy Canigliaro... And not this year. He's got a good 71, I think. But this is not very good at all. Yeah. Let's look at the young guys for Texas. Nice Tom Grieve. Corner outfielder. Crushes lefties. Could play every day, possibly. 309 hitter. Seven homers and 123 at-bats. Nice player. So, yeah. You're going to see a bunch of nice ones here. Uh, Larry Bittner, not so much. Jim Mason, utility infielder who bats left-handed like a Rudy Mioli type. Very young Jim Bibby as a starter. Eight, can't pitch on three days rest, but look at what he's... Nice performance there. Out, out. Bibby, 324. Then David Clyde, right out of his high school graduation. Here he is in 1973 with a 5 ERA. Um, 
just not worth it, really. The beauty of the Carryover League is that you only have 20-man rosters, and they're better than the traditional teams were, which means that the Rangers would never have to go to a David Clyde. They're going to find something better than this. Steve Dunning. Nah, not, not there either. Starter 5. Focult. Uh, he will have a nice year or two with the Rangers and the Tigers. This one's 388. I think he does even better in 74. So we'll look at that in the next season. And Bill Stein. Oh, well, not so much there either. I was kind of thinking that Mike Hargrove would be around. But it, he isn't. I guess Mike Hargrove comes around in 74. Oh, well. Well, that's the American, the rest of the American League, folks. That was kind of a fun little trip. When we resume this series of 73, we'll go to, we'll split it between the National League East and North and then the Mountain and West. Thanks for checking out these uh, card set analysis videos, and we'll see you next time.